Oh, so, so, okay, so we're going to get the water cooling system actually installed into the tower now. These are the parts I'm going to be using. Um, vinyl tubing, radiator, pump and water tank are the main components. The radiator is by Alpha Cool. It's the Nexus XT45. It's an 80 millimeter single ra single fan radiator. Phobia's DC12220, a 12 volt pump. And the bits power a bits power water tank, the multi Z80. So we'll start getting this lot unboxed, start getting it set up, and then we can get it installed. So, starting with the pump. All this needs is, it needs the compression fitting fitted to it. And that'll be pretty much ready for installation. Oops. <laughs> So, like the water block, this only needs to be finger tight and then an extra quarter turn just to make sure that the seal is good on it. that's ready for installation. This will connect either to the fan controller that I have or it will connect straight to the power supply unit. Now it's recommended that you don't put this on a, a variable speed. Connect it straight to the power supply. So this is the contents of the radiator box. You get the radiator, an Allen key, four, four screws and washer, four washers with that. These blue things are just dust covers. These pop off. Compression fittings fit exactly the same. I will also be fitting a fan and a dust cover, a dust filter on this, which I'm not going to put on the video, you've seen me do that before. I'll go away, I'll get this set up and we'll come, I'll come back. Okay, so I've fitted a fan to the radiator. Now this is set up to actually draw, to push air over the radiator because this is going to be fitted to the top of my tower and as the inter interior temperature rises it'll end up basically blowing hot air over the radiator so this this way it won't Im impede the actual function of the radiator so next I'll get on with the water tank and we'll have a look at that so this is the contents of the water tank two brackets with the nuts and bolts to attach them and the water tank itself. Now the water tank comes with an anti-cyclone and a semi-transparent stopper which is pre-drilled for a 5mm LED so you can light this. So all I've got to do is fit the fill the inlet port same again on the bottom for the outlet I'll give these an extra quarter turn and this will be ready for installation and we can get on with actually getting this installed getting it filled and tested 
So I fitted the fan and the radiator to the top of the system. I've also fitted my water tank and my pump. Next I'm going to fit my graphics card and memory before I actually fit the rest of the tubing. So the graphics card I'm going to be using is MSI's GeForce GTX 750 Ti. This is the overclocked edition. It's the Twin Frozer Gaming. So I'll get this open we'll have a quick look. So in the box there's a package with advertising but it, um, a lot of advertising basically and the actual driver disc and the graphics card itself This is a dual bay card with 10 centimeter fans or 100 millimeter. So we'll get this in. The memory I'm using is Corsair's Vengeance 1600 megahertz, 4 gigabyte strips. These come with the heat sinks on them. DDR3. Eventually there will be four of these in the machine giving 16 gigabytes. So I've slotted the memory in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two backplate covers and slot in the, me um, the graphics card and then we can get on with actually putting the tubing in for the water system. So I've got my graphics card in and my memory now so the next job is to actually start putting the tubing in. Now there are several competing theories on this. Some say go from the pump to the block to the radiator back to the, back to the reservoir. Others say go from the pump to the radiator to the block back to the reservoir. And there doesn't seem to be any consensus on this, which way round you should do it. I'm going to be going pump, block, radiator, reservoir, because it just, I'll be putting cold water after it's been cooled from going over the block back into the reservoir, ready to go through the block again. I think that's about, I think that's the best idea. So now, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our first tube in to go from the pump to the block. Pump outlet, block inlet. Good rule of thumb, measure twice, cut once. You can cut it slightly longer because it's easier to cut something down than it is to add anything. So about there.
and that is the first piece of tubing done. Just make sure you've got no kinks in it. You don't want to impede the water flow. Now I need to go from the outlet to the radiator. And I'll come back when I've actually got this done. Okay, so I need to fill and then charge the system. Charging the system basically means to let it run through. And then it will need to be run for a good few hours. So, remove the fill cap and using a small funnel it's a matter of carefully <laughs> checking for any leaks Now what I'm going to do is just run the motor for a few seconds. Topping up the tank. All the while I'm checking every port for leaks and then quickly running the tank up again. Now I don't want to completely fill the tank now because as you can see the coolant it's starting to get right the way through. So the coolant is running all the way through now. So I just want to top the tank up to about two thirds, of, two thirds to three quarters of full. Now this should allow the system to completely run now. And it is. So I'm just checking for leaks and there doesn't appear to be any now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this to run for a few hours and let it check it set and keep checking it every now and then to make sure that there's no leaks and everything's running fine. Links for all the equipment for all the parts will be in the description box as usual. Thanks for watching. See you next time.